What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the other side of the firewall podcast. We're talking about the latest and greatest of cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shan Tynes. What's up? What's up? Chris Abacon. What's going on, everybody? And Daniel Acevedo. How's it going, guys? What's going on? So welcome to the other side of the firewall. So Monday and Tuesday, we have our topics, Wednesday discussion, Thursdays, Ask a CISSP. Uh, where I sit down and I talk to somebody who is uh, an entrepreneur, a mover and shaker, a person uh, who is doing great things within the community. And then Fridays, everything else, movies, books, games, all that good stuff. But without further ado, I give it to Shannon. All right, everybody. So this article comes from CBSNews.com. It's written by Megan Cerullo. I hope I said that right. Cerullo. Craigslist founder Craig Newmark makes a hundred million dollar cybersecurity pledge, right? So I love to see this, right? We talk about investment going into cybersecurity and things of that nature and how people need to put their money where their where their mouth is, right? Like a lot of people can say whatever, but this guy's pledging a hundred million dollars, right? And so um Craig Newmark, right, who's the founder of, of Craigslist, right? Um he can't he can't get, you know, uh, prostitution off the site, but he can invest, you know, this hundred million dollars or whatever it is from Craigslist. You know what I mean? But um, he's a philanthropist, what? right? That's donate. It's going to donate a hundred million dollars to safeguard from potential future cyber attacks, right? So um, he's going to break it up. It's two. It's two different. Uh, two different. Uh, I don't want to say investment types, but it's it's fifty million. Uh, if I remember correctly, I believe it was fifty million for actual cyber cybersecurity, right? And, and education, right, is what he was talking about. I believe is what it was, and then the other fifty million. Uh, I'm trying to find it here. And I think to protect, the infrastructure. To protect infrastructure and power yeah. grids and cyber attacks, right? Um, and then it was what was the other what was the other fifty million for? It? Jump in education, there. Education, education, fifty million for education. Yeah, training for it. So. Love to see it, right? Like it's, it's a lot of money that goes into this, but this is like like a lot of these these rich philanthropists that are out there. This this is one of those guys that's like, hey, I'm gonna leave my money for philanthropy, right? Like if he has children, I'm not sure. Um, he's not one of those that's like, I'm gonna leave my fortune to them, right? A la, a la Warren Buffett, you know, uh, Daniel's, uh, you know, nemesis, uh, or, or or Bill Gates, you know what I mean? Like they're they're not planning on leaving their money, you know, to their kids or anything like that. Like they're trying to put it into something, and this is this is what he's deciding he's gonna he's gonna do it for, and and he. He brings up, there's a, a good point brought up in this article, right? Where they talk about how we've had two major ones, just in 2024, we've had two major attacks. We had the, we had the healthcare one back in February, right? And then we had uh, CBK. Was that the name of, of the one with the, the car dealerships and whatnot? Am I, I saying that? Is it CBK? CDK. Delta. Okay. CDK. Right. Was the one with, like, those were two major ones we had that had far reaching effects um, in 2024 so far, right? So uh, it, it's one of those things where, Yes, putting this money behind it is a great thing. Now, how it gets implemented, that's a little bit of a worry for me, right? Because he ta- they ta- he talks about it in the article about how he's a, he's a, you tell me what the cause is, I give you the money and let you do whatever you want to do with it, right? So that can leave some room for mismanagement, right? Like you could have someone that, that comes up in an organization and like, uh, you guys remember when we used to do, uh, what was that donation thing we used to do? CDC? Was it called CDC? That we used to donate CFC, CFC, that's CFC. What it was. combined, yeah, combined yeah. federal campaign, combined federal campaign. In the combined federal campaign, they used to have a, a booklet that came with it, right? To where you could look at, at what you were donating to, but they also had a percentage in there on how much was going into overhead, right? So like you could look at it and some of these causes, you're like, man, that's a good cause. But when you look at it and 50% of the money you're donating is going into to the overhead of paying, you know, all these different people and whatnot, instead of going directly into the cause, it may steer you away a little bit, right? So it doesn't seem like he's going to get his hands in that to be like, I want to make sure that at least 90% of what I am donating here is going into the actual cost, right? So it can leave, it can leave a little bit of room for that. That worried me a little bit when I read that in the article, but um, it's still good that a hundred million dollars is going to go to, to cybersecurity, right? So, but Daniel, what's your thoughts on this, man? I mute myself first. Yeah, I, I wish there was more people like Chris uh, Craig New, Newmark of the world. You know, like, where's the uh, Amazon guy? Where's Where's Warren Buffett at? Like, you know, these guys got deep pockets. Doubling down, doubling down, Warren. He says, he says the Amazon guy. He says the Amazon guy. He doesn't name him, but then he names Warren Buffett. 
you know, you know, the, the, the epicenter of, of him doing this was because he had to go to the hospital. of him doing this was because he had to go to the hospital. And he expressed concerns over the increasing frequency of cyber attacks, both at corporate level and in his household, household with connected devices. And、yeah. like, I wish more people that had that kind of power and outreach did things like this because they were concerned about it. That's kind of amazing. Like, I can't. Remember someone in his position doing this in a long time, at least for cybersecurity.、Um, I'm going to read more positive articles because I, I tend to focus on the negative as when we talk week to week. I'm always like the, the great top of the group. But this is a, a fresh breath of air, you know, and hopefully, especially for the infrastructure part, critical infrastructure for power grids, I'm always talking about like integrated systems that control power. These kind of systems specifically are designed for how technology is run. The older ones, and that's always like we'll talk to, about another article coming up where older technology can still be used in a very dangerous way. And that's you know, after the colonial pipeline, those kind of like attacks are always in the back of my mind talking about older integrated systems. So I think it's going to be money well spent, and hopefully, it helps protect that infrastructure and bring it to the next level wherever that comes. But you know. Hopefully, one day we'll become philanthropists and we can throw money around too and、uh, help the industries out. But what do you think, Chris? What you got this one? I mean, first, first thing that I thought was, hey,、uh, Mr. Newmark, we,、uh, other side of the firewall is definitely a <laughs> potential recipient from a philanthropic standpoint, as, as we do provide cybersecurity news, the latest and greatest to, to our listeners, right? So, you know, helping us expand our reach. You know, could、uh, you know potentially you know is in line with your mission? But <laughs> I'm kidding, or maybe not. But、um, I'm I'm not I'm not yeah. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, Ryan, de- definitely reach out to Mr. Newmark、uh, regarding this.、Uh, you know, after after the podcast. Um, but um, yeah, it, it's awesome that we're seeing this type of activity in the philanthropic, um, in, in the philanthropic scene, right? Because you've got like Mackenzie Scott, right, who's、uh, Jeff Bezos' ex-wife. She's donating. A, Obviously, a lot of a lot of money to ed- education, right? But with the education piece, I think the cyber education is is really crucial. One example, right? So,、um, in in the apartment apartment complex that I used to live in, right, the internet went out, right? Everybody complained. Everybody's like, "I can't work from home." Blah blah blah. There you go. There's a cyber incident. Think about it. If that could happen to.、Um, To, to the regular for, to the regular person, right? Like a, a, even though it was like a planned outage, right? Imagine an unplanned outage during any part of your workflow, working day. And I think、um, I'm not trying to say fear monger cybersecurity, but rather it's awareness and training of it. Because once people realize how insecure some of their own practices are,、uh, you know. Randomly installing an IoT device you got on Amazon that's tied to Chinese freaking data collector organizations, right? There's there's a lot that comes into play into that, right? So the fact that there is some type of investment planned, right? Pledge is just like a promise. It hasn't been invested just yet, but you know it is pledge. It is it is it is a step in the right direction. And what's interesting to me is specifically this one is the infrastructure aspect, like. Fifty million, yeah. It's、uh, towards infrastructure. That would have to go to, I would imagine, power, local governments. So there, there's, there's, I think, a lot more、um, investment that can be done than just fifty million when it comes to infrastructure. You're talking, you know, multiple, like three, nine, nine figures of investment, right? And I think this is a good start. Highlighting this、um, is always a good thing, right? And really, that's that's really all I got for this article. Is on me. Yes, over to Ryan. <laughs> over, over to Ryan、okay. for his sales pitch to Mr. There、Curry. it is. It was on the firewall. So definitely check us out throughout the week. Again, Monday, Tuesday are topics. Wednesday discussion. Thursdays ask us the ISSB. Fridays everything else. Movies, books, games, all that good stuff.、Uh, and then we just have a lot going on in the background, right? So check out RamCyber.io.、Uh, nothing there just yet, but that's going to be the landing page where everything will be anchored and tied in. And then. We have more projects coming up for the、uh, the podcast. So we just did one with the Cyber Coffee Hour. So check that one out with、uh, Dr. Joseph Burt Miller and Alfredo Nash. So really good conversation about Mastercard and how they're just they're about to change the game when it comes to 
intel and oversight. So hit that up. But in the article, so I'm just like, how do I get on this list? How do I get Ram Cyber on this list? So the core of civil defense, because he's doing civil defense as well as the other networks and groups, uh, Aspen Digital, Global Cyber Alliance, and Consumer Reports. And then he's also put money into, since 2022, significant investments in Black Girls Hack. So shout out to Rebecca Skeet. She's the CEO over there. We had her on the show not too long ago. Really good episode about all their efforts and what they're doing. But also Girls Who Code, Girl Scouts, Vets in Tech, Consortium of Cyber Clinics, Ransomware Task Force, and Shadow Server. So he's, he's definitely putting his money uh, where his mouth is. And then if you go to the website, he has a portal if you want to also help and invest. And, you know, you have your own philanthropic, there you go, goals. You can also put your money through um, his foundation as well. So I think it's really cool. I just want to know where I can sign up. And where can I sign up so I can pitch uh, what we have going on over here? Is it, yeah. direct, is it directing not... over to Craigslist? You said you got to go over to Craigslist to find this? No. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, maybe he's just trying to get eyes back on the site because like Craigslist is, is is damn near the dark web now, man. Some of the stuff going on over there, man. It's crazy. He said he left in 2018, so he's yeah. been gone for, yeah, for he, a while. Yeah, he hasn't been involved with the company for a while. And now he's just, because uh, it says net worth is like, well, you know, net worth is never, like he's probably worth more than this. <laughs> when it says 1.3 billion, right? So 100 million, still a su- substantial lot of money. Uh, but if he if he's putting it out there just like uh, Bill Gates and, and Melinda Gates do and all that other stuff where it's like we're going to put some money up and our friends are going to put some money up and then that just helps to uh, build. So I, I think it's a, a great effort and I, I can't wait to see what spins out of it. Right. When it comes to cyber defense it's very patriotic um, coming from a different perspective, because usually these things happen when war kicks off. Right. That's when everybody gets like. The drum, the drum beat of war kicks off. Everybody's like, yeah, America. Uh, but he's doing it from like, yeah, we're getting attacked every day. <laughs> like you guys are just not associating it with the the same type of thing. We're, it's, it is a war right now with cyber. So I'm curious, do you think current events kind of, I don't know, because he's, it's not like he just recently started doing this, right? Yeah, he's so been like, doing it for a few years. He's been doing it for a few years. But do you think like the announcement of it being such a large amount is sparked by recent events of things that are going on, you know, when it comes to cyber? Stay tuned, everybody. We may jump into this a little bit. But do you think maybe, that... Or maybe it could just be a coincidence because like every year we talk about every year is getting worse. So it could just be that triggered it, right? Like uh, him, him caring about the numbers because he was a CEO of a, a pretty large company at that point he might just be like okay how, we're bleeding money right billions of dollars trillions of dollars globally someone needs to do something uh especially here in the states because uh, that, that's where he decided to plan his flight right so I, I think it could just be a coincidence but i mean was like in quotes tomorrow's story also shows how um yeah like this is definitely uh and a a need is out there uh, because things are just becoming more advanced, right? Using old tech to do new things uh, in a, a detrimental way. So uh, I can definitely see that being a thing as well. So next year might be 200 million, right? You might, <laughs> might have to put more money in the pot. But yeah, definitely continue to check us out. Hopefully he's listening to the podcast. He's an avid listener. He's like, oh, they want money? I didn't even know. I didn't, I didn't think they need my money. Here's some money. <laughs> Here's some money to uh, help develop your website. But um, definitely continue to check us out. Hit us up on all the websites to go by our name, the other side of the firewall, the other side of the FW, or ask a CXSP on all the social media platforms. Uh, the website is ramcyber.io. And you can find me on LinkedIn under Rai Rai Security Guy. Where can we find you, uh, Chris? You can find me on LinkedIn under Chris Abacon. Last name is spelled A Bacon. And you, Daniel? I'm LinkedIn under my name, Daniel Acevedo. There it is. Stay safe. Stay secure.